Well, good day, everybody. Today I'm coming back to you with growing your plants to their genetic potential, but we're going to talk about growing them to their genetic potential and how it starts from the moment they're a seedling. Now, I'm all about showing you guys how to do this organically because really I believe in working with nature and I believe you get the most nutritious food when you do things organically. And I know there's gardeners out there that have their own methods to doing things and that's fine. If they're having success with their methods and they're happy with the way they're, they're gardening, um, what I'm about is bringing you new, a new way of doing things uh, so that maybe you can, if you see this video, you can just think about it a, a little bit. And in my opinion, this is the easiest method of gardening to use is growing things organically if you if you do it right and there are things that you have to be careful of especially when growing in containers and growing indoors because you don't want to bring any diseases or pests or anything like that into your home because without the help of the sun to sanitize things and sort of beat things back pests or disease can really go crazy so why why would we want to grow organically from the moment our plants are seedling. Now some people say that seeds, uh, since you're growing in sterile soil, etc. anyway, you, your plants, they really aren't going to benefit from organic fertilizers because it has to be converted into something they can eat. And that's understandable. So today I'm going to show you how it easily can be done without bringing pests inside and uh, diseases and things like that and without costing you a lot of money. So number one, I, I also want to tell you guys why. Why is it so important that we do grow our, our seedlings organically? What could it hurt? You know, if we're just giving them a little uh, chemical fertilizers here and there, you know, quarter strength, half strength, whatever you use, oh, it isn't going to hurt them because once you put them out in the garden, you can feed them organically or whatever. And that can actually cause your seedlings to go into a shock and or just simply not grow as well as they could have had they been grown organically from the beginning. Now, why is that? Well, it all has to do with the rhizobacteria and the colonizing of rhizobacteria in the root zone. And you can read up on this from many different sources. I'm just going to reference one today. All right, so if you go to wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash rhizobacteria, there's some great information on the website. It, and it tells you rhizobacteria, what they do is they colonize the root zone of the plant and they have this symbiotic relationship. And if you're just growing in completely sterile soil and feeding with some chemicals, the plants are not, or the rhizobacteria, you know, you may not have any in the soil at all if you're growing in sterile soil, but if you're using chemical fertilizers, even if you did happen to get some rhizobacteria in there, you're killing them off with the chemical fertilizer. So the rhizobacteria, if they get a chance to colonize the root zone of the plant from a young age, the, the plant will develop these different root nodules. So if you check on the website, all right, so for the plant to create and maintain root nodules for the rhizobacteria can cost the plant 12 to 25% of total photosynthetic output. 12 to 25 percent. So you might be saying, well, if the plant's going to have to expend energy developing root nodules and things for the rhizobacteria to colonize, why would I want rhizobacteria at all? I could just fertilize with chemicals and they will never have to bother growing their root system in a way that allows rhizobacteria to colonize. And well, here's the thing. If you 
if you do this for your seedling from a young age and you know from the moment you plant the thing you you provide a, a good soil that's beneficial for bacteria and free of disease and you let that plant develop its root system from a young age that plant is going to be stronger it is going to have a stronger root system when you go to plant it outside and it's going to be ready for more rhizobacteria colonization once you move it outside it's already going to have rhizobacteria starting to colonize the roots it's already going to have lots of those root nodules uh, if you're just growing in sterile soil and you're giving your plants chemical fertilizers they're not going to have that strong root zone and once you put them out there outside in your garden if you decide oh I'm going to do things organically outside well now the plant has to completely change the way it's been feeding it's got to start growing those root nodules and it's got to start allowing rhizobacteria in there to colonize and, and I'm hoping you can see how much better it will be for your plant if it's doing this from a young age uh, because rhizobacteria check out the website you guys and and you don't have to just go by this source all all the other sources will tell you the same thing a and you could learn even more uh, from other sources uh, because rhizobacteria is uh, it does so many things for the plant one of the primary things that it does is the providing of uh, nitrogen to the plant itself and it's a symbiotic relationship the plant feeds the bacteria the bacteria feed the plant how can you grow organically in your home without pests and disease and yada 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 well hopefully you're seeing the beautiful plants in front of me here and if you have a hard time seeing them with that camera let's take a look at them with the other camera okay I'm not seeing any problems here I don't see white flies or fungus gnats or anything like that. I may get the occasional fungus gnat, but I've learned how to deal with them. What is this here? Oh, this is organic soil. So this is a mix of soil that I do. And what it is, you could use either uh, peat moss or cocoa core, whatever your conscience will allow you to use. I use peat moss. I like it better than the core. I like the texture. I like the the way my worms break it down. I like the acidity of it. Um, I've done research on the the peat bogs, and I know people saying that oh, peat bogs are being over harvested or something like that. I've researched the harvesting of peat moss from peat bogs. And that is in one of my previous videos from, I think, a couple months back. Take a look at it if you wish. Uh, anyhow, yeah, what I do is I use, you could use 50% either peat moss or cocoa core and 50% of a good potting mix. Not potting soil, but a potting mix. Okay. And that's what I use. And also, uh, however much uh, vermiculite or, or uh perlite you want because you got to have enough in there for aeration so I do put a healthy amount in there and then I always throw in a couple of good handfuls of worm castings yes worm castings now I do have previous videos as well on uh, starting your own worm bin and that way you can have worms making castings for you. And I get a, a five gallon bucket filled with worm castings probably every five weeks. So the, the worms are well worth it. And you don't need a worm bin that's any larger than this five gallon bucket. Okay. This isn't my worm bin. I have a, check out the other video to see my, my worm bin. It's a worm tower and it is uh, fantastic. So it, the worms don't stink. They're not hard to maintain at all. They eat a uh, little bit of uh, peat moss. They eat food scraps. You, you just change out the trays every couple weeks in order to give them new food to harvest the castings. It's so simple. And the, 
the worm castings are a nice clean source of all that bacteria billions of bacteria in a handful of worm castings uh, and it is a like I said a clean source you shouldn't have any funguses or diseases or anything the the worms actually help to fight against all that stuff so if you use a bit of worm castings in your your potting mix uh, you really shouldn't have any problems in fact I've noticed that the fungus gnats really do not care for potting mixes that contain worm castings so uh, yeah coca core or peat moss mixed with a good potting mix and some worm castings ver vermiculite or peat moss for some aeration and you've got more than enough nutrients in that pot to feed that plant for months and uh, potting mix in itself if you go to the store and you buy some potting mix most of that stuff can grow your plant for four months without even needing fertilizer so I don't want you guys to be thinking that you've got to be dumping chemical fertilizers on your plants to grow them healthy I mean look at these look at these plants I don't ever fertilize I don't have to do any of that um, I mean I should I guess I should say very rarely if these plants are growing in here long enough to where they start to get some deficiencies I can use some very low strength just very little couple drops of uh, fish fertilizer and I, I like the uh, fermented fish fertilizer it has more um, phosphorus or potassium one of those than just the hydrolysized fish fertilizers and the fermented first fish fertilizer uh, doesn't stink quite as bad but you're just using a couple of drops so initially when you mix it yeah it does stink a little bit but guys after a day you don't smell a thing and I very rarely have to use it I maybe just use a couple of drops in a gallon of water and then I can water these plants in and that's going to be more than enough fertilizer but they, they, you won't even need to do anything like that until they start getting you know big like this you've got plenty of nutrients in here with the potting mix and the worm castings and the bacteria in here just you know that symbiotic relationship with the plant it's going to be great for you guys so don't waste your money on fertilizers get some worms they take up very little space they take up very very little of my time okay I feed these guys like once a week and I harvest castings every two to three weeks so uh, check out my past videos on starting your own worm bin and the other videos on growing your plants to their genetic potential and I think they'll really help you guys out so I want to thank you guys so much for watching this episode I hope your gardening is uh, coming along that you're preparing for this uh, coming season uh, go ahead and post the comments down below if you want me to have a look at your garden I'll be more than happy to check out your channel and uh, I usually do subscribe to those who subscribe to me if they have uh, a certain number of gardening videos and they they have something that I can follow so thanks again guys have a good one